at just about every stage of audio production, recording, editing, mixing, processing, and mastering, we depend on a variety of audio meters to help us maintain optimal levels, identify and solve problems, and repair and creatively modify sound. Even novice recordists are familiar with the basic DAW level meters that dance along with the music and warn of potential overloads in recording and mixing. But there's a lot more to be gleaned from those indicators, and a lot of different scales and references convey a range of information in a variety of ways. Besides level, other types of metering provide further information about audio signals, from wave shape and phase to tonal and frequency balance, aspects of the audio that can be critical in applications like mixing and mastering. And more advanced metering displays offer the opportunity to dig into a complex wave and make edits and tweaks that would have been impossible not too long ago. For this somewhat more advanced course, I'll assume some basic working knowledge about audio levels, dB scales, waveforms and phase, and familiar displays like frequency response graphs. Of course, I'll still briefly review those topics as I go through the relevant metering, especially in the first few videos, but I'll focus on taking a more detailed look at all these meters and displays. The course will start with a little background on level-related topics, including average versus peak signals and analog and digital scales, and then take a look at the different level meters, peak and VU meters, that are widely used in audio production with their variety of different calibrations and ballistics. We'll cover best practices in recording, mixing, and mastering, and get into detail about the various industry standards, both recommended and mandatory, for level calibration in music production and broadcast. Moving beyond level metering, we'll take a look at other familiar displays, like the waveform displays seen in the classic oscilloscope, as well as in the audio lanes in every DAW editor, which we reference for most audio editing tasks in mixing and mastering. And when it comes to mastering, additional meters provide critical information about the stereo image and phase content. Vectorscopes, or goniometers, show the phase between stereo audio channels to help detect potential phase issues before finalizing a mix. Correlation meters also help with this, and balance meters can augment our ears in judging overall stereo balance throughout a project. For tonal applications, like EQ in both mixing and mastering, spectrum analyzers provide a real-time view of the frequency balance of audio signals, and the course will take a look at these displays, including scales, calibration, and applications. The course will finish with cutting-edge displays, 3D and 2D spectrograms, which offer an even more detailed look at the key components of an audio signal, level, time, and frequency. A spectrogram not only conveys more information than most meters, but in many cases is an editable display, allowing for advanced edits and tweaks to be made to specific aspects of a complex audio wave. We'll take a thorough look at the spectrogram display itself, along with some of the advanced applications it can be used for, including audio repair, removing unwanted sounds embedded in an audio file, separation of voice and music signals, at least to some degree, and creative use in sound design for post-production and virtual instruments. But first, the course will start off with a little background on level measurements and a detailed look at all types of level metering. 